I'd like to take a moment to thank my channel members. Thank you. It's continued support like yours that keeps this channel growing. And if you haven't already, please consider joining today. Hello and welcome to That's Just Prime. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformer Studio Series 106 Optimus Primal from Transformers Rise of the Beasts. And I love this toy. Released in September of 2023, this is available in stores right now as of the time of this recording. It is a leader class figure and it retails for approximately $50. And Optimus Primal here is one that I have been looking forward to for quite some time. It comes with everything you see included here. So we're going to start right back here on the back. We've got, of course, that scene, the little backdrop right there. If you want to put this up on your shelf and display it this way, it makes for a very, very cool display. Doesn't quite fit the way I have him there. Well, that'll work, I guess. There's another way we can pose him to make him fit. But there you go. If you've got room on your shelf for these displays, more power to you. These things are absolutely beautiful. We've got our sheet of instructions. We've got our figure, of course. And then we have quite a bit of accessories here. We'll go through them real quick. So the first one that I want to point out here is this Matrix of Leadership. And it's really neat now. The I don't want to be the person that complains about getting a Matrix. It's very cool that we got one. Unfortunately, there's really not a whole lot we can do with this. There's nowhere to store it inside of the figure. All he can do is hold it with his hands, but still very cool that it was included. We've also got this axe right here. We get two of these scimitar style swords. And of course, these can also be plugged in together end to end to form that weapon right there and then this next piece is a bit interesting we get these two chains we get two of these and these are articulated one two three four points of articulation on each of these and what the instructions tell you you can do with these is you can actually plug them into each other and then you can plug the weapons in you'll notice that the ends of the scimitars one has a port and one has a plug or a peg rather so you just match that up and you can plug those in right there and you can have yourself a chained double scimitar weapon kind of a thing if you wanted to do that or you can also swap this out for the axe and you can put that in there as well so you can kind of there's a lot of playability options here you can play around with these and just kind of um you know set these up any way that you want for the purposes of what i'm going to do here i'm going to put everything away except for the two swords we also get the figure itself and you've got two slots on the back right here where you can store the weapons if you wanted to do that that's a thing that you can do as well very very cool now taking a closer look at the primal figure himself this thing is absolutely gorgeous love the way this guy looks in this configuration that i have him here he stands approximately four inches tall now right off the bat just based on the pictures from the package and the instructions i have the arms backwards apparently the arms go that way with the fur part in or towards the back like that i'm not a fan of that you got the fur right there i say show the fur he is in ape mode so i like to display him that way so if you're noticing that the arms are backwards, I am doing that on purpose. I just think that looks better. That looks more realistic right there. So going all the way around so you can see he's a, you know, robotic gorilla and very faithful to what we saw in the Rise of the Beast movie. Very, very nice looking. Articulation wise, the head can move up and down. The jaw can open and close. Check that out. That is really, really neat. The shoulders can actually butterfly forward so you can do some chest stomping action right there you can move the shoulders up and down in and out rather forward and backwards all the way around rotation at the bicep bend at the knee rotation at the wrist and the fingers are also articulated on a pin not a whole lot here on the waist the legs can go back and forth a little bit and the feet can also tilt back and forth a little bit which we're going to do right now and we're going to stand him up straight like this so there you go. That's a thing you can do with him as well is stand him up straight. And in this configuration, he stands at approximately six inches tall. So, yeah, very cool looking. Absolutely love 
the way this looks. I, oh, he also turns his head side to side. I guess I, I mentioned the up and down, but I didn't mention the side to side. You got a maximal symbol right there below the head scope or right there at the, uh, the clavicle, I guess. And there you go. Very, very neat looking figure. Absolutely love the way that this guy looks. A couple of quick comparisons. Let's do this. Let's put him back in his knuckle dragging mode <laughs> or pose rather. And we'll do a couple of comparisons. So here is the Studio Series 106 Leader Class Optimus Primal next to the Voyager Class figure from the same movie. So this was the Rise of the Beast main line, I guess, Voyager Class Optimus Primal. So you can see what the two of them look like together. And uh, yeah, I think this this Leader Class Studio Series one looks, looks it's, it's a definite improvement over this one. I think it looks really, really nice. Although they do look pretty cool together. There you go. You can see what the two of them look like together. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't show him off with the original Beast Wars Optimus Primal. This is the 10th anniversary um, edition, the one that was a little more cartoon accurate. So there you go. So you can see what the two of them look like together. To transform Optimus Primal into his robot mode, we're going to start here in the back. Let's start with the legs here. Uh, take these little flaps up here and just kind of flip them up. And if you haven't already, it did so on mine when I was flipping them. Just kind of unpeg this peg right here is going into this port. So tab and slot. Just kind of pull that out and extend the leg. And then that's going to clip into place there. We're going to bring the eight foot and just bring that up as far as it'll go. And then bring the robot foot down and extend the toe. Make sure that everything is locked into place. There's another tab here that we need to get in there. And it's kind of hard to see. I think I got it. If I didn't get it, we'll find out later when I try to stand this figure up. So again, just flip up the uh, little flap right here, bring down the foot, extend the whole leg, just extend this whole thing out, tab this into, no, we're not ready for that. We're going to bring the eight foot up, robot foot down, extend the toe. Now we should be able to bring this in and tab it into place and then just close the little knee panel right there. And I'm not sure I got this one in right. <laughs> so we're going to try that again. And now it's tabbed into place. There we go. So that's the legs pretty much all done right there. Bring the arms down. So now with the arms, we're going to bring this flap up. We're going to bring this flap up like so. Rotate. No, not yet. We're going to bring the, the hands about halfway down like that. And now we're going to rotate this around. And then you can take this fish right here and just kind of rotate it. That's going to allow you to get it in there all the way. Close this and then close this over it. And then this panel here is on a double hinge. So we're going to bring that out and down and straighten all of that out. And that is going to be his robot arm. So again, just kind of straighten all of this out. Open this panel up. This panel is slotted. There's a tab and a slot right there. So we're going to bring that up. We're going to open that panel. Bring the hands about halfway down, rotate this panel, rotate the fist, and then put that fist away. And there. Close this panel, and then close the big panel over that, and then double hinge this one down to close that gap. Rotate, and the robot arms are done, and you can bring the shoulders up or down as far as, you, as, far as you'd like. One of the things about this uh, new movie, Primal, is that his shoulder pads don't go up, really. They were just always kind of down like that. And I miss that. I miss with the original one, the way that his shoulder panels went up. And you can do that, but you're going to see screws. Eh, it's completely up to you. This whole panel right here, we're going to untab this. That is tabbed into the back right there. We're going to bring it all the way up. This panel here, we're going to bring it back. And this is going to rotate like so. And we're going to bring that down and that should, there's a little tab in a slot right there. So we're going to tab that in there and then we're going to bring, did we bring this down yet? I think, yeah. Let's leave that there for now because I forgot what the heck I'm doing. All right. <laughs> Take this chest piece right here. And we're going to open this. We're going to pull this piece up like so. Rotate the heads around, push them back down. And as you push down, we want to make sure that the gorilla head is looking up. So that this will come down as far as it'll go and be able to close up just fine like that. 
And now we can take these at the lower hinges here to bring this all the way down. And then this panel is going to tab into place. Is it? I thought it tabbed into place. Maybe it just sits back there. But there we go. There is Studio Series 106, Rise of the Beast, Optimus Primal in robot mode. And here in robot mode, he stands approximately seven inches tall. And again, fantastic looking figure coming in close. Let's take a look at his head scope so you can see what that looks like. It just look at all the details on this guy. You know, it was one of those things. One of my critiques with that movie, with this character's, uh, the, rather the character model, really, is that he lacked color. I miss those touches of red and blue that we had with the original. It was all gray and black. With this figure, it pulls it off really, really well. The blacks, the grays, and the silvers, with those little green eyes right there, makes it look really, really good. Going all the way around, we don't have a lot of hollow spots we don't have any waffling it's a good solid looking figure articulation wise the head can go up and down can turn side to side shoulders again can go in and out forward and backwards all the way around rotation at the bicep bend at the elbow rotation at the wrist and again the fingers are also articulated on a pan and this time they are are they individually or is it two and yeah no they are individually Let's see, I think the uh, ring and the little finger are... Okay, so it's two and two. So these two are pinned together, and then these two are pinned together. So that's how that works. Um, did we ever get a waist rotation? I don't think we did. There we go. Now we have, we have to unpeg this panel here, and now we have a waist rotation for the robot mode. About that far and that far, and that's about it. Was I supposed to bring this up? I missed a step. I think I was supposed to bring this up and then bring this down. There we go. Now we can rotate the waist. <laughs> I forgot a whole step. And their waist does rotate a 360 degrees. Legs can go forward that far, back that far, in and out, rotation at the thigh, bend at the knee. The toes can move back and forth. And we've got ankle tilts for wide poses. So again, bringing in all of the accessories. We showed you that matrix earlier before, and all he can do is holding in his hand. If that's something that you want to do, I guess you can do that. We can still bring in the scimitars, and we can still pop these in right here. There we go. So if you want to use those slots, you can certainly use those to store his scimitars. You've also got these little ports on each thigh, so you can take the axe and you can put that there actually i think what i've been doing i've been putting it with a handle up like that so you can store that there i think it looks better over here actually i think it fits better over here just because it puts the blade up and it doesn't interfere as much there you go so you can do that you can do that with the scimitars as well by the way they do have a little peg on the side so you can also plug those in right there if you'd like you can have the scimitars one on each hip or what I like to do is I like the axe on one hip and then I like both scimitars on his back. It just kind of calls back to the original Beast Wars a little more. So I just kind of like doing that as well. Now, the instructions mention these chains. Now, these chains do have little ports here on the side on each end. And it did talk about putting them up here. And just kind of have those hanging there. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. And they also show it like combined. So I think what they did for the instructions. Is they had it something like this. It's kind of hard to tell the diagram that they have in the instructions. And then they just kind of had that going on. I, I don't like that. Um, quite frankly, I'm not a fan of the, of the chains. Like I really just don't find much to do with these so this is just going to go in my bag of parts along with the matrix uh, as you saw during transformation there's really not nowhere in the chest to put that matrix which is unfortunate i get it though that's where the heads are so there you go so now let's go ahead and give him his weapons and i just like the scimitars and i i, I like the way this figure looks with the scimitars in his hands and his axe on his hip like that. I just kind of really like the way that looks. And uh, there you go. We'll give him a cool pose. And there you go. Fantastic figure. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying this figure. 
a lot. A couple of quick comparisons. Here he is once again with the Rise of the Beast Voyager Optimus Prime. Also, you can see what the two of them look like together. And this is also a fantastic figure. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely adore this figure. I think this figure offers a lot. But I don't know. Just new and shiny. You know, this figure just looks so good. Uh, one more time. Here he is with the original Optimus Primal 10th Anniversary Edition. So we can see where we've been and we can see where we're going you can check out the two of them see what they look like together and just in case i run out of diet coke here he is with i keep my g1 optimus prime here on my desk for such an emergency and you can see what the two of them look like together so yeah like i said this guy released back in september of 2023 just found him on my store shelf this past week so he's in stores he's hitting stores I, I don't know if there was just a delay or what but he's hitting stores i found him out in the wild and i'm very happy that i did he is going to be an excellent addition to mine and yours and any optimus prime collection and i think that about does it for the transformer studio series 106 rise of the beast optimus primal leader class optimus primal what did you think of this figure let me know down in the comments give me some thumbs up subscribe share with your friends if you like what you see as always thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you next time on that's just prime